for it because before I can get that John Hancock and that contract, he asked me about 2,000 questions. <laughs> you know I mean, it was from everything from the team to what's the culture, and the thing that I can appreciate was he even wanted to talk to the trainer and the strength and conditioning coach. He asked me about the video coordinator, but I told him we don't currently have one, so we can't talk to him. <laughs> so we let him, it was from top to bottom, it wasn't just about the team. He's not here just because it's like the WNBA trying to take a stepping stone. He's here, he's invested. I want everyone to know that he's invested. And because of that adversity, Derek, I think you're gonna be a great coach. <coughs> I know from the questions that we discussed when we were trying to get your contract signed, I know that you must have learned a lot. I can tell that you have grown, and I'm looking forward to being a part of this journey with you and the Sparks. And so without further ado, and I know you guys are tired of hearing from me, let me introduce you to the Los Angeles Sparks new head coach, Derek Fisher. Watching um, Pat Summit in Candace at the University of 
Tennessee, and Shamil Hose Club, and a number of other great players that played it at the University of Tennessee. Pat Summit, to me, she's my all-time favorite in, in terms of a women's basketball coach. And I don't even want to say women's basketball coach, basketball coach, period. She was absolutely phenomenal. Um, what C. Vivian Stringer has done at Rutgers is phenomenal. Uh, and so, for me, this opportunity is not a step down, sideways, backwards, um, somehow different than the men's game. Basketball is for everyone. It's for everybody. That's what makes it such a beautiful game. Um, and so this opportunity to, to coach basketball, to work with some of the greatest athletes that play the game in the world, um, is not something that I'm taking lightly. And so the opportunity here, the responsibilities that are now on my shoulders and our shoulders, I'm taking them very seriously. They're not being taken lightly. I'm thankful, I'm grateful, uh, and I'm gonna do the best job that I can possibly do to help us win a championship as soon as possible. I know talking to this one, <laughs> that's what her plan is. And it's now my responsibility to help her figure that out. That's my number one job as the head coach, is to help our players accomplish the goals and objectives that they have and obviously do that in a team setting. Um, so those things are important for me to express um, because I think in the world that we live in now, 2018, um, it's important to recognize that I think the NBA itself, but the WNBA in particular and the Sparks in particular because of my support of the Sparks, the way I follow the team. Penny and I have had many conversations separate from just the conversation we've had over the last several weeks about the game of basketball, life, um, how I can help the Sparks, whether it's popping in the locker room to speak to the team. Anything that I could do to be helpful to Penny, I've always tried to do. Um, but to me, the Sparks have always been about diversity, inclusion, unity, and those are three things that have allowed me now the opportunity to be the head coach of this organization because of those reasons. That's who this organization always has been. Um, and so I'm thankful and lucky to be a part of it now. Um, lastly, I want to thank my family. Again, I talked about my family, my extended family. A lot of you, Jim Hill knows my mom. Penny, you know, some of the people that have seen me over the years, they know my mom. She's I don't care what team I played on or coached on, she is the team mom, period. There's no <laughs> fans and butts about that. So Candace's mom, my mom, everybody's mom. It's about to be a fun ride. <laughs> my, my, and my mom and dad deserve a lot of credit for the household that I grew up in in terms of appreciating the game of basketball as it's played regardless of gender. I never watched Candace play basketball in college thinking that she wasn't great at what she did because she's a woman. I appreciated the game of basketball for the details, the nuances. My parents had me watching basketball, appreciating the way the ball was passed and shared and the way the teams worked together. I was a Lakers fan growing up. Magic is my all-time favorite because of the way that they played the game together and how they unified and were successful as a group. And so those things apply in basketball regardless of gender. There are certain basic fundamental things about the game that I believe in that apply regardless. And that's what I'm here to bring to the table. Um, my fiance and two of our children are here. Thank you guys for putting up with me over the last couple of years as, as I was um, you know, doing some other things, building other business, playing some golf, getting on your nerves. Um, you know that this is something that I, that I genuinely love to do. Um, and so thank you for the love and support. I know I wouldn't be sitting up here without you guys either. Uh, and so it's going to be a fun ride. You know, we still have a long way to go as far as school. Let me get out to June. Um, <laughs> the team is here in LA, so we're going to be here. So we'll figure that part out. But um, thank you, no, seriously, for everything. Um, I'm, I'm not out here alone. So thank you all for listening. Um, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I guess I'll open that question a little bit. Be like, Eli Horowitz, I know a lot of you guys know who that is. I've spoken to him quite a bit over the last uh, few days, so I'll, I'll turn the stage over to Eli and let him, let him do his thing. Yeah, so we'll
questions now? Yeah, Jim Hill, CBS2 at KCAL 9. First of all, congratulations to, to all three of you. Obviously, you know, ladies first, <laughs> you would want it. Uh, Candace, you've accomplished so much in your magnificent career. How do you see yourself benefiting from Derek's experience? And Derek, what is going to make you, how, how did you as a player and a coach, how will that make the Sparks benefit from your experience doing those two positions? Well, I first off want to start by saying, you know, I'm very, very, very excited uh, to welcome you to the Sparks family. I'm, you know, obviously when Penny told me the news, it was, you know, excitement and just looking forward to the season. Um, I met Derek when I was, <laughs> how old was I, eight? I was eight or nine. I don't want to think, I don't want to talk your age, but I was like eight or nine. <laughs> and um, my brother was, you know, going through the NBA process, and so we, we kind of connected with, um, his agent was in Arkansas, and I remember talking to him and just coming to the Sparks, and I actually got sent on Instagram an interview on, you were working for FSN, I think, at the time, and we did an interview of my rookie season, and somebody tagged me in it when he was named the coach. So I'm really excited just because of the opportunity to work with him on a level of just respect and communication. I mean, we've always had that. But also just, he's won championships. And until I won a championship with LA, I didn't really realize how much it matters to have the experience and the expertise and the knowledge going into a season and how much that really pushes you through. So I'm excited. I wore my ring today. I want more. <laughs> Put that out there. I don't want just one. Um, but I'm very, very excited because I think our group is willing to listen and learn. And we've had the experience of winning a championship. So and together, we're, you know, we're going to be pretty good. Uh, Jim, if I remember what you said, actually. At Sorry, this point. I no, 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 no. We, we want to hear from you. Um, no, I think that the the experiences on both levels. One, first as a player, um, I do think sometimes it's hard to uh, communicate, connect, share um, commonalities if you haven't been in that person's shoes before. Right, and that can apply in a lot of different ways, but it's specifically related to basketball. There are times where, in speaking to players, communicating, working together, uh, if you haven't run that pick and roll before, it's hard to have a conversation about how to run screen and roll. If you haven't had to defend uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation with five seconds left on the shot clock yourself, sometimes it's hard to explain to someone how to do that. Obviously, there have been great coaches that haven't played before that have won a lot of basketball games, and there's no slight to anybody. But I, sometimes I think that helps in terms of just being able to communicate from a shared experience level. Um, and also, I haven't been at the Hall of Fame level that, that Candace is, but for a lot of our roster, I've, I've been in a position where I know what it's like sometimes to play a whole game and only get four shots. And you're frustrated and you're pissed that you didn't play more and you didn't get enough shots or you don't feel like you're receiving the opportunity or the notoriety that you should be just how to manage some of those emotions and continue to bring yourself back to the team and what's most important and thinking about things larger than yourself. So some of those experiences as a player will help. As a coach, I coached for a year and a half in terms of in New York, um, but I've been coaching and leading and teaching probably my entire life. Um, we can look at the time in New York in terms of coaching resume we could also look at a lot of coaches that have Hall of Fame careers or go down in history as the best to ever do it. Uh, there were different points in their career arc where they lost more games than they won. Uh, some of the great ones had rough starts and ended up having 30-year Hall of Fame careers. Uh, some of the great ones started great, had some down years, and they figured out a way to bounce back. All coaches get hired and fired. Uh, but what Penny said earlier about learning through adversity, bouncing back, improving, evolving, growing. That's who I am, that's what I'm made of. Um, so I just ask to anybody that questions it, um, the book is not finished yet. If you, you open a book, it's 300 pages long, you can't assume how it's gonna end on page 57. You gotta read the whole book. And 
I feel like this is an opportunity for me to continue writing my coaching book, and I'm, I'm excited to do it here in LA with the Sparks. Beth Harris, AP. Hi, Derek. Hi, um, this kind of is a continuation of that a little bit. And after what happened with the Knicks situation, how hungry were you to get back and try to prove yourself in another venue? And also, what's the last couple of years been like? You, know, you mentioned the golf, and yeah, yeah, but that's not really who you are. Right. Yeah, I'm glad you know my golf game very well. <laughs> um, no, first, um, I, I think you're, you know, you're intuitive in terms of after being fired in New York, it, you, as a competitor, of course, you want to get back out there and show everybody that you can do what they think you can't do. Uh, and it took a while for me to connect to that, and I think own uh, the idea that I was overly fixated on what other people thought about my experience in New York, uh, as opposed to what I felt about my experience in New York. Uh, and so, yes, I was, I guess, hungry to get back to competing again, uh, but every opportunity isn't the right opportunity. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've had multiple conversations with teams in, at the collegiate level, uh, with professional teams on the men's side, um, and you know, timing, opportunity, what their needs were, what my needs were, they didn't align at the time, and this did. Uh, and so, you know, I'm excited to be here for those reasons. Um, but yes, I, I love to do this, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to, to have the space again uh, to help others. That, that's essentially what coaching is. It's not about me, to be honest. Um, my job will be measured by how much I help campus and NECA, and hopefully we can resign Chelsea and some more other <laughs> You know, free agents, but uh, that's my job. You know, so it's not even about what people think of me per se, um, but the job that I do to help them be the best that they need to be, and that, that always has to be my focus. Nick hey, uh congratulations, Derek, on the job. Um, anytime there's a new coach, obviously there's a uh, situation of building trust with players, implementing a system. What are some of the things that you're going to do to be able to implement? that with the players, especially being, you know, this should be your first year as a head coach. Yeah, I think um, building relationships, that's that's the key element. Uh, there are a number of coaches at all levels that have brilliant ideas in terms of X's and O's and offensive system, defensive system. Are we switching? Are we showing? Are we running 1-4 UCLA? Are we running flex? Or you can ad nauseum talk about those things. But if there is no relationship, if there is no connection, if there is no ability to communicate with those that you are trying to accomplish the same goal with, uh, then all of that information just bogs down. Uh, and so for me, uh, that is for sure something I learned in New York. That's where my coaching experience will help me uh, in terms of learning how to communicate with players and the best way to do it in a way that Candace needs way that NECA needs, in the way that, you know, our younger players, we see Denise or Maria, or different, different people that may be on our roster over the years, um, it's my job to figure out how to build a relationship with everyone in a way. Um, I think that puts them in a position to understand that I, that I truly, genuinely care. Like, I'm not just your basketball coach. Um, I'm a person, I'm a human, and I, I always have to relate to what their experience is and try to help them manage those things. So um, I'm excited to, you know, get back into that process. Darren, hi, uh, Dylan Hernandez, the LA Times. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, what you thought about your time in New York as opposed to what other people did. Uh, what did you make of your, of the, your tenure there? Um, I learned so much. Uh, such an invaluable opportunity. Um, one, to learn how much, or not even learn, to reconnect to the idea of how much I love to genuinely win <laughs> and how hard that is at the professional level. Um, you know, that, that jumps out to me right away. Uh, two, uh, what I learned is that if there is not clarity and purpose, vision and mission from ownership to management to coaches to players to staff, it doesn't work. And it doesn't matter what offense you run, like, like I 
was said a, a few minutes ago. Some of the basketball things are irrelevant if ownership, management, staff, players, if we are not aligned in the way we see going about our jobs and achieving our purpose and our mission. And I think here at the Sparks, there's a history of that. And I believe in approaching the game that way. And that's why I felt and feel like this is a great fit. So I'm learning that in New York and, and sometimes going through um, losses, failures, mistakes, uh, informs you of how to do some things differently and better. Uh, and I know Spenny, Penny spoke of uh, the process that we went through and how many questions and conversations and back and forth uh, to make sure that before accepting the responsibilities in the job, uh, that one, it was the right fit, but two, uh, that the commitment that's necessary to be made to these players can be made. And, uh, that's why I'm here. And so Penny mentioned that you, you're not viewing this as a stepping stone, that, that's correct? Like to an NBA? Yes, okay. that is correct. Okay. I'm, this is, I'm here. Like there, there isn't a future outside of what we're here to talk about today. Um, that's the way I approach everything that I do. As a player, I didn't sign a contract to think about where I was going to be playing after that. That's where I'm playing. And now, as a coach, this is where I'm coaching. And I don't think about other situations or other teams. Um, I'm the coach of the LA Sparks, and that's what it is. I'm happy about it. You going to run the triangle? Say it again. You going to run the triangle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, it's a, good, it's a great question. Uh, not, we probably, and, and I'm not going to tell everybody what we will be doing before they see us. Um, <laughs> but uh, we probably will not in, you know, the truest, most authentic form of it in terms of the way Tex Winter innovated the offense and the way I played in it for Phil Jackson. We probably won't approach it that way. Um, but there will definitely be principles of it that you see in a lot of teams. You know, at some point there'll probably be some players in the shape of a triangle, but <laughs> like, I don't, I mean, like, I don't, we probably won't be, you know, running the full-fledged triangle offense, I guess. <laughs> but I will say, if um, whatever it takes to make sure that we're being successful, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so I'm not going to take anything off the table. Uh, Derek Gio Garcia with the Fantasy Sports Cave. Uh, what are some like the mentors you look up to when it comes to coaching? Obviously, you just mentioned Tex Winter, you have Phil Jackson. Do you turn to uh, Phil for coaching advice or anybody around the NBA, WNBA? Um, wow, that's a long list, um, and that includes a lot of women's coaches. I mean, from Tara Vanderbilt at Stanford. Um, you know, obviously what Gino's done at UConn, but I've also in Pat Summit. You know, I told you I grew up on Pat Summit and always appreciated the way she approached the game, the way she led her, her teams, um, how she pushed her players, but at the same time, I would assume, and, and I think Candace has probably spoken to this at some point, um, there was a love there, though, that allowed her to coach them really, really hard because they knew that she loved them. Uh, and so for me, I, I mean, I have a ton of, I guess, people that I've looked up to and that I, you know, would love to talk to. I mean, I actually have a list of, I mean, obviously Michael Cooper's been in this position before um, as a former NBA player, um, spent some time as an assistant coach, and then, you know, coached in the WNBA. He's a great person to sit down with. Um, I mean, what Sandy Brandello is doing in Phoenix has been great. What Nikki Cullen did in Atlanta in her first year last year is to be commended. What Dan Hughes did in Seattle in his first year last year is to be commended. Um, even though we're competition, so to speak, uh, as a person that is new to coaching in the WNBA, um, hopefully they'll take my call. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, if not, you know, then there, yes, there are people on the men's side of the game, quote unquote, that I could go to uh, as well to have conversations with. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, it is basketball, and there are a lot of commonalities and similarities between coaching basketball at all the various levels and regardless of gender. Um, there are great high school coaches that know a ton about being successful and how to coach and lead and teach um, that, I can, that I can speak with as well. So I'm, 
I'm pulling out all the, the tools to make sure that uh, I can do the job as best as I possibly can. Delby Reyes, LA Sports Access, welcome to the Sparks. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm curious, what vision do you see for this team? How does the current roster fit that vision? And also, a handful of players are free agents. Is that something at all that came to play when you had conversations with Penny before taking the job? Yeah, I'll, I'll, Penny has the hard responsibility of figuring out the free agent part. So I'll, I'll turn to her when we when I get to that part of the um, the answer. But yes, no, my my vision uh, for our team as a currently a structure. We obviously have players that have won championships and expect to win more championships. Um, Candace made that mandate as we've been sitting here. Uh, so that has to be our vision. And we obviously want to do that as soon as possible. So uh, of course, that's, a, that's our destination. That's where we want to go. Uh, but also our vision has to include not just the destination and the end point, uh, but what are the small details and nuances and ways of doing things on a daily basis habits that we need to build uh, and the continuous improvement on a daily basis that lead to the destination. So let's not just be fixated on the jewelry at the end, but let's be fixated on being great at practice today. You know, let's be fixated on improving our spacing. Let's be fixated on passing the ball at the right angles. Let's be fixated on sprinting back and transition defense as fast as you run down there when you're trying to get a bucket on offense. Like, we have to become prideful in all of those things and not that the group hasn't been. I'm just speaking to you in terms of what my vision is for the team, is making sure that on a daily basis we're individually getting better, we're collectively getting better. Um, a couple of things that jump out, I think, obviously pace-wise, we have to, I think, improve because we're capable of it, not just to throw that out there because it's a popular thing to say. I believe that there's a pace that we can play at that fits our personnel, uh, that isn't too fast, but also allows us to be more effective offensively and, and create higher percentage shots for our players by just by doing things a little bit better. Um, we have to rebound the ball better, um, and, and that's a big part of the team has been good defensively historically in the last few years, but finishing more possessions with rebounds that then allow for Candace and Necker and Chelsea and people to get out and do what they do well and just make plays you know, for themselves and others. So, that's kind of the, you know some of the, the parts of the vision that I see uh, in terms of the roster. I like it, you know, as it is. Penny, like I said, has kind of the harder job of trying to figure out how to make the numbers work and and resign as many players as we possibly can that we want to resign. Um, and, and we'll get together, you know, in the next few days to you know start to massage some of it and figure it out. But this is pro sports. Ain't no joke about that. Whoever shows up to training camp on our roster, we we have to win. It's that simple. Uh, so we we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, when we get to that point. But uh, you know, Penny can probably better speak to what the plans are in terms of making the roster. Well, I understand. The good thing is, like I said before, being a championship organization and led by Mr. Holland and our ownership group, we provide a great situation here. So we never have the good thing is we never never have any players who want to leave us. <laughs> So we're sitting at a good point where obviously all our players want to be back. You know, the realization of that is that may not happen. You know, and also you take into account, just like I was telling Derek, that this phone's going to be blowing up. We're going to be discussing these things going forward because even though I'm the GM and yeah, it's a, I have the vision, I still want to make sure we have a team that he's excited to coach and be a part of and, and will help us win. I think that's important as well, you know, so. I basically haven't done anything yet. I know everybody wants to be back, and that could be a situation or not could be, but want to discuss it and have his input going forward. And when does it feel great about the team that he's going to coach? All right. Andre Russell, 102.3, KJLH, D Fish. Congratulations. What are you talking about? Oof. I'm going to go back. We, yeah. we go back. Great to see you, man. You too. Derek, talk about your uh, goals for both yourself and the team for this season. Have you thought about goals yet? Um, yes, I've been mean, constantly thinking about goals. I, you know, my goals are related to the team. I, it's not about me individually necessarily having goals. That's for me and my family and personal stuff. Like professionally speaking, 
my goals are to help Candace accomplish what she said she wanted to accomplish and anybody else on her roster. Um, so my goals are tied to theirs. And those will be the conversations that we'll be having in the coming weeks. Uh, it's one thing for me to want something or have a vision or see things a certain way, but I have to be connected to the way Candace sees it. I have to be connected to the way NECA sees it, and Chelsea sees it, because that's what is important. Uh, and so, you know, we'll create what our vision board is, and what our goals and objectives are as a team together. It won't be me just saying, here's the goals. Well, <laughs> there's a line over where she sees it, and we're already not connected. Um, so, I guess to answer the question, those are my goals, to be honest, is to spend the time necessary to converse with our players um, and figure out how do we get the best out of ourselves and what does that need to look like and how do you want to play and like to play the game of basketball? How do you need me to communicate with you in a way that helps you understand that I want the best for you, but at the same time I have to coach you and push you to lead you? Uh, so that's, those are the, the immediate goals of figuring and creating out that map, so to speak, and that plan. Hi, Derek. My name is Amy Shalewis. I'm with WNBA Kicks. Um, this year, Candace dropped her and Adidas PE. And I just wanted to know, as a former NBA player, what's your favorite sneaker when you were hooping? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, dang, I don't, Candace, I'm not trying to hate on Adidas love. <laughs> you know, Adidas, they show love to the girls, you know, youth teams, so I, I can give Adidas some love. But um, I, when I played Nike, Nike Air Max up tempo were, in my opinion, still the greatest basketball shirt ever made outside of Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the one that I wore uh, for a good period of time during my career. And uh, yeah, I still love it to this day. I'm Mr. Lock, I'm LA Sentinel. Um, you two seem to have a really good relationship with each other. How do you find, um, Candace, how do you find um, how will you be able to kind of keep um, Fisher up to speed with the culture of the team? How will you guys kind of learn and kind of exchange that in the coming months? Well, I think first of all, I want to say um, this idea that uh, great players don't want to be coached, uh, that's false. I think the great players really, really, really want to be coached. And so for me, I, I don't think that the <laughs> I don't think that the relationship is going to come in between that. I got to go by the time. I got to go. Um, but I I think that you know he 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 knows basketball. I mean, obviously, and you know he's great with relationships. But you know our team is is a solid group. I mean, we have veterans um, mixed with some newcomers, but we've been together for quite some time. We have chemistry. We know each other. Um, and we willingly hang out with each other. And I think that uh, it is a huge part of who we are and what we do. And he seems like he's extremely into that and, and family and communication. And, I mean, that's, that's easy to bring somebody in that's open to that type of stuff. Oh, hi, uh, for Penny. Um, uh, I know Brian Agler signed an extension last year. I was wondering if you could kind of take us through the last few weeks as to how, how we got to this point, you know, kind of starting with uh, you know, Brian's resignation uh, to, you know, when and how you identified Derek as a candidate. Was that uh, just your idea? Was that a collective decision? Did, did you get input on that? And then when you, and when and how you reached out to Derek? Well, to be honest with you, it was Brian's decision to resign. You know, and as a GM, when you, know, you call me and you think about it, don't think about it, send it to me, to be honest with you. And that was his total decision. It wasn't like it was a forced out or anything like that. But when he wanted to design, you know, I accepted the resignation. And as far as what came to mind with Derek, it goes back to here's a guy that I've known and been with us forever. And from time to time, I, when I'm going into my 20th year as a GM now, y'all should be celebrating me too. <laughs> and, um, over that 20 years, from time to time, Derek and I would have conversations. So this isn't the first rodeo like to talk about the team. You know, and I would tease him in the past, say, Derek, come be the coach, come be the coach. You know, you're gonna make a great coach. And it's about timing. And like this thing, when 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 Brian wanted to design, I said, here's a guy that I've known on coach, no one out, 
and had some experience. I say good or bad, it's still experience. And I said to myself, looking at the veteran team that we have, and when I say this, it wasn't just about my decision. I took in what I thought our players needed. When I say Candace, NECA, these people, and even when I was thinking about Derek, you know, Candace won't say this, but I asked her. I said, Candace, how do you feel? And I said, I'm going to tell you something. You better tell them, buddy. What do you think about Dick Christian? You know, because I wanted to hear her opinion because these players have evolved. And believe it or not, I always say as a GM, I don't know if a lot of GMs can say this or not, we can go out and get all the Michael Jordans in the world, but if the players ain't buying it, it ain't happening. Sort of like what he said. So I feel that our players, they're big, they don't want championships, they don't been through trial and tribulation. I don't see them crawl, walk, cry, do all those things. And I think they have a they have a little stake in this to have an opinion about who want, who, who we want as a coach. Because I think it's important that they feel comfortable. They feel that they're getting the best quality. And when I said to the candidates, they're giving me happy nurse, you went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it started from there. So once that happened, I said, okay, awesome. Let me go out and approach Derek about coaching the team. So that's basically how that came apart. He designed opportunity, met the chance of a person that I don't talk to for 20 years, I already know what Derek is made of. I always believe he would be an excellent coach. You won't find a, any person in here that will champion you, maybe Gloria. <laughs> maybe Gloria, and I will. And I said to myself, if the time is right, right now. And, and more importantly, the thing I love about him, he's the family person. He's an excellent communicator. And this is what people have to understand. Well, women, you better be listening to us. You know? So here's a guy that I know is going to listen. You know, not be offended when a player says, hey, why? You know, but here, explain it. You know, and always been courteous and very respectful. And in addition, that's huge, in addition to his coaching experience. So that's how I can resonation. First thought in my mind, I can tell you, it was a very short list, a short list of one. And matter of fact, people ask me, I had a person in the office ask me, Penny, what's the backup? I don't have a backup. I'm going to close, in this case, I'm going to close plan A. You know, and plan A, it went to ownership. Eric Holloman here, tell you, discussed it with him. He said all about it. He was on board. Once he's on board, we went out to Derek, and this is what you're looking at, the final reality. Check, check, and check. <laughs> so he covered all the boxes once again. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure you know, nobody likes to, well, very few people, I don't loves to give themselves too much credit, but Penny is being bashful in not speaking to the identity. There are not a lot of organizations in sports over a 20 year period you know, where there's been one person in charge the entire time in terms of being a general manager. Um, on the men's side, we like to think of the Spurs, the football, we like to think of the Patriots and how over long stretches of time, the team has found different ways with different teams to win championships. That's what she's done. Uh, and so I think she deserves a lot of credit and room to make a decision that she feels from her experience as a player and from her 20 years of experience as a general manager, what is best for the team that she leads. Uh, I would like to say she probably understands that pretty well. And now I have to live up to that. The pressure's really on me. She, she has a track record of hiring a coach that knows how to win. She's hired multiple coaches that have won games and helped the team win championships. And, and now that's my job. Candice, you talked about earlier about Derek having the championship pedigree, but what are some of the other things that you feel like you can learn from him to be even a greater player than where you are now? Well, he played the game of basketball, and so I think just um, the way that he sees the game, and you know, I've watched him, and I know commentating is a little bit different, but I think you can recognize that you teach the game kind of the way that you see it and that you recognize, and we love to play with flow, we love to play pace, um, and to do things different, you know, to be able to to not do things just the same because everybody else does it. And um, that's something that I really respect and, and have have seen with him. And I'm excited just, I'm a basketball head. Like, and, and everything that I do is related to basketball. I come from a basketball family. So for me, you know, to be able to just talk to somebody in regards to a game. We were talking about the game that he watched the other day and knew exactly what I was talking about. So just to, to be a part of something or somebody who loves basketball and eats, breathes, and sleeps it, I mean, I'm excited about it. 
Brady Popper of the Athletic LA. Derek, the game has evolved pretty rapidly since you retired, and even more so since you last coached. And you seem to have it be inheriting a team that plays into that evolution with Candace and Neca can really stretch the floor offensively, switch on the perimeter defensively. Can you talk about what you've learned in your time away from the game and how you intend to implement an offense and defense that will really utilize those MVPs? And then can you fill us in on the assistant coach situation? Yeah, no, I mean, great questions. I think the, the evolution of the game, um, you know, it's, it's, it's relative. I think, you know, the championship teams that I played on here in L.A. and in, uh, in 09 and 10, uh, even the team that made it to the finals in 08, um, you know, we had Lamar Odom at the four a lot of times in the fourth quarter, Paco Sala at the center, and then Risa and Kobe, myself. And there was a versatility to the game. Uh, having five players on the court that all could make good decisions with the basketball, that all could shoot, that all could defend, uh, that's an important thing to have. And I think that this roster has the framework in a very similar way, where if we need to play bigger and have size on the court, we can. Uh, but if we need to and want to and choose to play smaller, Candace is capable of, of guarding essentially at the center position. Uh, so we can play smaller, quote unquote. Uh, and so I think we will have whatever we need. Like I said, Penny's done a great job continuing to keep a roster that competes for championships year in and year out. So I'm not overly concerned about what ultimately will look like um, in terms of the personnel. We'll have the talent, we'll have the ability. Uh, and so it'll just be our job to work together and figure out what fits us best. We don't want to just run up and down the court just to run up and down and be able to look at a piece of paper and say we're fourth in the league in pace, but we're still losing games, so who cares? Uh, of course, we want to play with pace, but we want to have purpose to what we're doing. Uh, and so we'll, we'll find that balance as we, you know, as we communicate and work together. And then Penny and I will continue to talk and communicate about how to kind of build out a staff that meets those needs, um, you know, because that's important as well. Your staff is is extremely valuable in terms of how they communicate uh, with our players, how they're wired and conditioned to communicate and work, uh, and the willingness to, to sacrifice to make sure the players have everything that they need in order to be successful. Uh, and so we'll you know we'll be very intentional about that process also. Any questions for you? Going back a little bit to Brian Aguilar, what are you obviously you both went into signing this extension with him in mind long-term plans. What was it exactly that changed there? And also along with obviously the excitement of having you back here in LA, criticism. Um, a lot of people questioning why not hire maybe a woman, someone with more experience, especially in a year where the previous game has grown significantly. What do you have to say to those comments? Okay, we're going to start with the woman first. <laughs> Well, I like to say the GM's work. <laughs> and start there. I don't look at um, coaching as man or woman. I look at who's the best person for the job. Now the world unfortunately looks at that. You know, that, oh, you have to be this gender to coach this gender. I don't. I look at who's the best person for the job, who is gonna have the best chemistry with the team, you know, I think that the world is finally catching up to what I would say my philosophy is and what our organization stands for as far as diversity. <coughs> the world is just catching up and understand that a uh, Becky Hammond can coach a men's team. Uh, Christy Tolliver, even a Candace Parker, you know, I truly think I can go over there and be the GM of both these teams and win them a championship. You know, so I think the world is just catching up now to understand that Women can do that, not so much look at a woman team that hired a man as a coach. I'm hiring the best coach. But I do think the world is catching up outside of the sparks that women can go over there and coach. The, so that the next time, I'm hoping in, I won't say 10 years, I'm hoping in three years, that I won't get asked the question, why did I help hire a man coach? But just understand that we hired the best coach for the game. To answer that question. I, we had another one, but I forgot what that was on the front side. Going back to Brian Aguilar, just um, you both went in there with long term plans. What was it that changed there that he wanted to resign? I have no clue. That's the question you would have to ask him. The only thing that I know is a GM job is always to be prepared.
prepared for the what if. That's my job, for part of it. I don't know why he wanted to. I didn't ask. When somebody wants to design, I can tell you being an athlete, and I think um, <clears throat> these two up here, anybody that's ever competed at whatever level, when someone wants to design, it's not my job to talk them out of it. You know what I'm saying? It's about the sparks. When, you, when I first took this job as a GM, and this will be in my memoirs, the number <laughs> one thing that Michael Cooper and I said was this right here. And my, Michael will probably tell you this, Barry. We only want people that want to be here. If you don't want to be here, I'm never going to close that door. I'm going to open it and let you walk out. Because I choose to leave in LA. We can build whatever we want to build here. We don't have to beg anybody to stay. Now, we have to tell some people, no, not to come. But <laughs> not to beg to stay. So when you call me want to resign, send it to me. I, I didn't ask why. I can honestly tell you here, Tate. I, I did not ask why. I said, OK. And like I told you, I'm a GM. I'm always prepared for what if. Just like this team you'll see next year is 2019. A smart GM, I'm in 2000, I know what this team's supposed to look like in 2021, not just 19. I'm paid for the what if. So once that happened, I go and that's what they pay me for, right, Mr. Holland? Right. And I went to go <laughs> and I said, well, bam, I always wanted to work with this guy right here. So let me check with the players and let me run over there and get him. And it's about timing. So, I, I didn't ask. That's the question you would have to ask him. I have no idea. I really don't. Well, if I can, I'd like to speak on what you just asked the first, like the woman yeah. thing. Um, just as one of the only analysts in the NBA side of things, doing t you know TNT and NBA TV, I never played the NBA, but I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable and know what's going on. And I'm a fact person. So with Penny as the GM, I played for Michael Cooper. I played for Jen Gillum, who's a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I played for Carol Ross. Wait, Jelly Bean. Yeah, for Jelly Bean. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> played for Jelly Bean. Played for Carol Ross. Played for Penny. I played for Brian. That's Aglin. Why you did, didn't you? Yeah, I played for you. <laughs> no, I played for you. <laughs> I played for Brian Agler, and now I'm playing for Derek Fisher. So if diversity is an issue within the WBA, it's not an issue with other sports, and it, it never has been. So I just would like to speak to that, and to second what Penny had to say about just. I hope at some point we don't have to discuss this. It's just about who's the best for the job because going forward, that's what I want to see in both leagues and across the board. So, sorry I had to interrupt on that. <laughs> we got time for one more. Anyone else? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.